three, two, one. Yes. Hello. My name is Something. I'm breaking down my track Soundbox. Came out on Sun Function Music. Big up for the Sun Function fan, by the way. So yeah, I'm gonna go through the main stuff in this track, like drums, bass, intro sounds, and effects. But first, I'm gonna play the track. Hope you enjoy. The, the acoustic drums. I routed them to each individual channel. I have here the kick, snare, hi-hats, overheads and the room mic. Also, I start uh, this, the chain with, this, with the same things, kind of with, uh, with gain, by adding gain, and then trash, you know, add distortion with clip control. Then uh, clean up some frequencies if needed, uh, with Sooth as well, maybe some compression, transient shaping, clipper, limiter, and that's about it. So this is the kick. As I said, I start by boosting the gain a bit. Let me just turn off uh, all these things. So again, distortion. Cleaning some frequencies. Then clipper and limiter. Just uh, for, you know, controlling the peaks and overall loudness. For the snare, yeah, same thing. Kind of the same chain as the kick. You know, start with the utility gain, distortion. Then, cleaning up these frequencies. I don't like these two resonances here, so I'm cutting them. Let me show you how it sounds. Uh, let me just boost this so we can hear it better. Yeah, I don't like those, so I cut them. Then I have Sooth, really good plugin to like remove harshness to clean up the sound. Slight compression. And uh, transient shaper, make it tighter, less sustain. And then to end this chain, I have a clipper and a limiter. Uh, I, I overuse this stuff. Then for the hi hats, you know, same thing gain, distortion, cleaning up the sound, removing the lower frequencies. For the overheads. Same thing, you know, gain, uh, distortion, and then some EQ, removing the low end, 
cleaning those two frequencies from the snare cleaning the harshness and again clipper limiter room same thing cutting the the snare transient and the other two frequencies again sooth I really like to use sooth it's you know, very easy to make the high end uh, smoother you, know, you can decide how much you want to go then it starts to sound a bit weird and then as always clipping and limiting just to make it louder and control the peaks on top of the chain i have yeah why not three transient shapers they do a lot here uh the drums sound better with those and also create space for other stuff in the in the track <laughs> On. I have this gain here, I don't want it to run too hot on the clipper and then limiter, make it louder and the filter here, I'm, I'm automating it to you know, fade in and out the sound that's it for the, the acoustic drums now let's go into this uh, lit sound, I did it on Serum, I use it uh, pretty much just in the intro Yeah, this patch is very simple, I have two sawtooth waves, oscillator A with a uh, minus one octave and oscillator B plus two and three semitones up. Yeah, oscillator B does does the vibe on this one, I think. And LFO one, automating the cutoff filter and uh, the noise level. And uh, Hello for 2 is creating this like vibrato effect on the sound. Yeah, so the LFO 3 is automating the panning on the, the noise sample. And oscillator 4, it's uh, automating the, the sync on oscillator B. And also on the effects, it's automating the flanger and the phaser. And I think that's it. Yes, that's it. Uh, let me just uh, turn off this, uh, this chain here. Just shaping slightly the sound. Sooth. I'm cleaning a bit the heights. Some distortion. And an EQ. Oh, yeah, it's here. Yeah. I'm attenuating uh, the oscillator B frequency. Just so that you know, around 8 dBs or so. As you can hear, yeah, if I turn on. Yeah, those frequencies there. Yeah, I'm cutting them off a bit. Then uh, filter. Uh, automating this filter for the sound fade in and out. And after that, reverb. I like to use both together, filter and reverb. It's good to help fade in and out the sound nicely. And also help some transitions. Here, you know, just making sure there's no low frequencies. Oh, I don't serve on this sound. Then utility gain and sidechain. 
Yeah, moving on. Uh, we have here a kind of a retro synth sound. I took a short bit from a sample, then I did some melody. Uh, it starts in F. Uh, this this small bit here, it's an F. Then goes up a semitone and goes back to to F. Creates this kind of melody. Then um, I have an EQ to fade in and out the sound and also uh, and also a chain with the dry and the wet signal to put the sound in a space. On top I have the, the same sound, less filtered out, a slightly different tonality. And it's just a one shot I play sometimes. Then, on top of that. I grab the same sound and pitch it up two octaves. It's a way shorter sound. Next, I have this kind of uh, brass sound uh, using Omnisphere for this. It's a basic patch with sawtooth waves and EQ and filtering. I'm using it mostly as a texture layer rather than a main element in the intro. And below I have this piano. Queuing, generating this, this frequency here. EQ. Bit of distortion, and then this uh, effect chain I did creates this kind of uh, spooky mood, this vibrato effect, and also OTT and the amp making the sound brighter. But yeah, without the LFO. Yeah, I really like what it does. It's subtle, but, you know, creates this nice vibe, which I like it. Then for this Atmos sound. Yeah, for Atmos sounds, I like to, at some point when doing a track, bounce and import the whole thing to pulse stretch. Uh, as the name says, it's a software to stretch stuff. That's a great, uh, great software to like stretch stuff and create these uh, like long Atmos things. It's a great with vocals as well and acoustic instruments. Let's say you know I have a two three minutes file. I put it on pulse stretch and uh, I stretch it for like ten minutes, make it like a ten minutes long sample, something like that, and you get this cool Atmos sounds. And yeah, I bounce these sounds out of pulse stretch and use them on intros. I think it's a nice trick, you know, it's like instant, easy Atmos, like noisy Atmos sounds that you can just load onto your track. Moving on, I have a low impact here. The way you do these kind of things is just like 
know the key come to a reverb. You have like the dry signal and the wet signal. And, uh, you know, with some saturation and EQ, you can get these kind of sounds. And then on the reverb signal, I'm shifting down the pitch. Uh, or maybe using a frequency shifter, I don't really remember. But, uh, you know, there's uh, a lot of ways of doing these kind of sounds. You can make it in a cleaner way, I guess. But, uh, yeah, this is how I did it. And then, yeah, the most common sound used in electronic music. White noise. The sound that you're hearing is layered with, uh, with the bass. Uh, it's, this is like the, the, the bass on the drop, which I then uh, loaded the uh, Argot Lunar on it. I have the EQ, because I just want the eyes. The comp filter is doing all the job. Could also play with the transpose knob. But uh, the comp filter is doing all the job here. So you don't really need this on, but yeah. Also sounds cool, pitch it up. Um, I use this transpose filter to make a second layer with a lower, more like a noisy kind of layer on it. But yeah, without the comp filter. Now, with the comp filter, creating those peaks, really like this effect. Yeah, so the sounds by themselves sound a bit weird, but you know, I wanted to use the same bass that I used in the drop, but in the intro, but I wanted it to be different. So this was the, the way I found, or like the way I choose to, to make that happen. Then same thing on this layer, I used the same uh, Argot Lunar patch, but uh, you know I turned off the comp filter and I lowered the, the sound by two octaves. And with an EQ we have this like kind of noisy layer. So yeah, all together they sound like this. Wait, um, just turn off, uh, yeah turn off this, yeah sound like this. This is actually a sample that uh, that I took from a video. I don't know if everything. I pitched up nine semitones. Then I added an echo, echo, and. Uh, OTT, bring everything up. Just cleaning a little bit. I think some gain. Then I uh, use little, little older boy for the format. And a bit of drive. Uh, yeah. Oh, this one. Uh, same thing below for the short vocal samples, but I added the uh, this filter on serum that I used on the second drop after the breakdown. But I'll, I'll come to this in a bit. Um, then I just have a filter and the reverb at the end of the chain to like uh, automate in some parts of the tune. A kick. It's a simple uh, sine wave pitch down. Then layer with uh, a noise sample. I think this uh, might be, you know, 
the kick or like the room mic uh, from this uh, uh, addictive drums patch here. Cleaning up the mess, then compression, slight compression, pretty much just adding makeup again. Slight mid side EQ, and then cutting this part. I don't want it to interfere with this movement of the synth kick. There's the acoustic snare sound that I took from Superior Drummer. Let me just start by taking this fade out, this gain automation. I cut a bit the transient. Cut the, the transient of the, the snare. Also with the utility automation here, so make sure there's no transient. And then uh, EQ. I have the transient here below, so I don't need the transient from this snare. Distortion, cleaning the harshness, distortion, and then we had the transient. Yeah, I made this on kick two. It's very short length and uh, very fast pitch down. First. Distortion with trash and clip control mode, then cleaning up some frequencies. Then clipper and limiter, distorting a bit and then making it loud, driving it quite hot in the, in the limiter. But uh, it's okay when it's like a short-lived sound, there's no problem if it's, if it's that hot. And also utility gain, so you know, I'm making sure the snare ends when I want. So the acoustic layer can come in after. Then uh, some high end layers. You're just cutting at the high end here. And another one. One slightly more wider than the other. Then to finish, I have this texture layer on top of the snare. For the percussion, I took the hi hat from Spirit Drummer. I'm using Sooth to clean up the, the higher frequencies and then removing the lows. Then we have this kind of writhe. This is actually. It's actually the snare. Doesn't really matter because uh, you know I'm using vocoder after. It makes it pretty much just noise, smooth noise, I guess. Then uh, an EQ. It's arrived, so I don't need the low information. I start cutting at around 300 hertz, and then from there cut it up to taste.
And to now finish, we have a break here. somewhere here. I'm using it to make a shaker. I have an initial EQ here to, to remove the low information. Sooth to help me clean the harshness. Auto pan. I'm, I'm moving the sound left and right very fast. Yeah, frequency shifting as well at the end of the sample. Just creates a bit more variation. Transient shaper. I'm driving a bit on camel fat and some final EQ because you know frequency shifting it's like shifting all the frequencies left so it's creating lower frequencies so I have to cut them after and uh, yeah I think that's it for the drums or maybe yeah, I can show here the the sidechain triggers I use a click for this just to trigger the sidechain and I place them a little bit before so like the the ducking effect comes just before the kick or the snare hits so moving on the bass sounds something like this So this track is very sample based, uh, also my CPU doesn't handle s that much uh, serums open in the same project. So yeah, I tend to make sound design sessions before I start the track, you know, using, you know, whatever synth, like Serum Vital, whatever. Then I, you know, resample, try out stuff, uh, and also try to look for happy accidents as well. Then when I feel like doing a track, I just create the drums and then I play with those samples. But yeah, I have a small example here. Um, it doesn't sound the same as this track, but you can get the idea. So I start by doing, let's say on Serum, a bass patch. Then I bounce it, I put it on a sampler, apply some more processing. Then yeah, I play around with it, and when something sounds cool, I bounce it, and um, yeah, I have this like kind of sound design folders that I organize them by month. Then I just have to come here, select them, and start building something. So stuff like that, and then with that, and then I start building a track, adding more layers. And uh, this track is an example of this. I'm gonna solo the bass. It's kind of a simple bass, but then with a, a layer on top, let's say like this crunch. It becomes a little bit more interesting, uh, creates this like crispy sound. Um, I also bounced the, this bass and I distorted quite a bit. Uh, it sounds disgusting, but I used some bits on it, like this, this ones here. But together they like sound nice. And up here, also have this percussion sound layer with the bass. It creates a nice um, groove, I think, and also adds this nice texture. Uh, yeah, what makes the bass, I think, is this, this vocal here. Without it sounds okay, but with the vocal layer, yeah, it just creates such a vibe. Yeah, I talked about this song before and also the processing. 
I used it here in the intro, just before the drop. Like, go up in volume slowly. So yeah, I use this vocal uh, stab here uh, as a layer for the, the main bass. And yeah, all together, uh, they all sound like this. And I'm gonna show some of the processing as well. So here's just minimum processing. I'm just lowering the lows, uh, boosting the mids, uh, the, the mids in the center, and then cutting the lows on the sides. And this uh, filter, I just use, uh, like I automate this in some parts of the track, like the breakdown and stuff. Then a limiter. Just for overall loudness and like controlling the peaks as well. And yeah, for, for this like re uh, re distorted bass, it's just, I mean, you can try whatever, you know, like with trash or something, just play with the modes and drive it quite a lot. And, you know, you have this little bits here. Some of them sound nice, like, like this one. It's nice. I like to have these like small, like weird bits on the, on, on the track. Then in this one. Yeah, it's probably like a wrist bass, uh, you know, with uh, some glide, like playing an F and then playing two octaves up, uh, and then resample that and use just the, the small bit here. Then we have this bass as well. This one is all, all, has a little bit more work. I have this comp filter. Face distortion. Then this ring mod for the, the wobble at the end. You're just making sure there's no lows on the sides. The band, just compressing a bit the, the lows, uh, not doing much. Another small EQ, shipping the sound, OTT, bring the highs up. And then reverb and uh, a filter that I use it to fade in and out the sound. And then as always, uh, this clipper and limiter combination for loudness. Controlling the peaks. Uh, also the same bass here. I've also these small uh, reverb parts. I like this like reverb placed here. It's kinda cool because like uh drop happens and then you have this like open uh, sound here with the reverb. And then comes this whoa just after more centered, it's kinda like nice uh uh stereo uh stereo stuff happening. I don't know how to explain. Just nice contrast. One wide and another one straight after centered uh, creates this nice effect. Like this contrast here. 
and uh, yes, I have this this part here as well. This, which is also taken from the, the that little voice I had. Same processing I used on the other ones, but just it's a different uh, part of the vocal. Yeah, that's it for the bass and the, this, this drop. Then on the second part, uh, this is a new element here, layer with the bass. What's doing all the job is this LFO here. This is just noise. Then this kind of melody in the background. Same sound as this. Uh, same serum patch, but with uh, lots of reverb. Then uh, the bass in the second drop has a different pattern and it goes like this. The, the only thing I have more besides uh, this different pattern is a noise layer below and some kind of 808 they start at 808, but I'm just using the, the meats and the eyes. And the sub here. And the vocal is also slightly different. It's shorter and has this, uh, uh, you know, like this like flanger filter automation that does this kind of uh, sound. We like to use the this flying around serum. It creates this kind of you know moving pitching things. I don't even know how to explain. Just sounds cool. We like to use this. Uh, fits in this track, I guess. Another layer, uh, this percussion thing, I use it for uh, to like to play along with the bass. Adds this kind of randomness and uh, weird groove. without it so we can hear the difference. And 
know, with the percussion. <laughs> Gives a nice texture, as I said, uh, makes it more, uh, more like a weird groove, and also adds this like randomness, which I like. Like these samples, they all sound different, and this one specifically is bent to the left side, so uh, you know the track and the sound itself becomes more interesting. Also, using left and right, and they are not all the same, so it's not that boring. Even if uh, you know this bass pattern. It's kind of repetitive, um, you know, when uh, layered with a cool layer, like a more random layer, it just makes the sound uh, more interesting. Uh, yeah, I hope I explained it right. Then I have this, uh, also this uh, serum synth that I talked to earlier, but this uh, it's like same version, same serum patch, but plucky. It's like kind of a pluck sound. And then I also use it in this these two bits here in the track. I think it adds a nice touch. Turn it off. Turn it back on. Yeah, this song is also playing with this vocal here, with the flanger automation going on. Next. Uh, some effects. Never mind the, the naming on the samples, I'm very bad at that. But yeah, I have some small bits that I took from previously made uh, samples. I have just like small bits. Just to make the track a bit more interesting with these uh, small effects. So yeah, and this in fact, on the processing, I have pretty much the reverb, uh, EQ, and another reverb. After that, I have a filter, which I automate to create a cool movement in the sound. If I play without it, uh, it's gonna sound a bit weird. So that's why I also use the filter. It just sounds nicer. If I play with the track, see that it helps quite a lot. And the outro. Just grab another. Uh, Atmos sound from the the bounce that I did from Paul Stretch. Just use the different part here. The piano, it's also back here. Different notes, but it's very, very, very tiny. Uh, it's like very quiet melody. I just bring back the sounds from the intro and I use them to finish the track. I think I have some kind of uh, frequency shifting going on. I don't know where, out here. Yeah, I'm pitching down this effect with a frequency shifter. 
So, you know, uh, the track is coming to an end. All the sounds are being filtered out. And this sound is uh, pitching down, uh, which I think creates a nice ending for, for this track. So, what's coming to an end as well is this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Actually, this was my first time recording a track breakdown. Uh, it was a bit challenging, but in the end, I liked the result. Yeah, feedback's very welcome. Let me know if you like this video or not. And hopefully, catch you on the next one.